you know what we're doing today? You don't care. Okay, cool. Today I'm going to be uh, getting over myself and ranking all of the books that I've read in 2023. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So I say get over myself because I... <laughs> I struggle to rate books. It's something that I found very difficult and I did a little bit more before I started a YouTube channel but then as I knew that other people would look at it besides like my couple of friends that I had at Goodreads at the time. I don't use Goodreads anymore just FYI don't look for me there. I'm technically there but I do not use it but I slowly like stopped rating in general. Every once in a while I would like get back into it for like a couple of books and then stop again and I think that that's just because I didn't do a good job of defining what my rating system even is and I kind of started to realize like how helpful it can be and also I miss out on all the stats at the end of the year and I feel like maybe it would help me know what genres I'm more interested in, what I have more fun reading. So that's that's what we're doing today. So first of all we need to go over like what my star rankings mean even. So for me five stars means one of two things. Either I just absolutely loved it and had like a great time reading it. It was like fun entertaining. I think that this category is actually something that I haven't really included in my five stars in the past but I think that there should be like reasoning for that to to be allowed to be that high on my list. Like Project Hail Mary for example. I love Project Hail Mary and I had so much fun reading it that it it would be a five star even if it wasn't like as impactful on my life as some other books. Which brings us to the second category of five star, which is that like it maybe changed my perspective in some way. Maybe it was just so meaningful to me that I, I'm i thinking about things in a whole new way like because of this book. So this would be like Elena Knows, which I didn't have like a super fun time reading all the way through and it wasn't like a super easy quick read for me because it's some really like heavy subject matter and it is kind of depressing to read through. But I looked at life in a new way because of it or I just, I had a new perspective that I didn't have prior to going into the book and it, it's just so impactful to me and so therefore it's a five. Four stars generally like I really enjoyed myself and I would recommend it to most other people. Three stars is that like it's a it's a good book it's a decent book there is like nothing outrageously wrong with it there's nothing like amazing about it either and I might recommend it but it would be like specific to who the person is. Like I wouldn't recommend it to everybody but there are certain people that I could probably just think of easily that I would recommend the book to. Two stars would be maybe had some good parts but it was like overall outweighed by the bad. Maybe I'm still happy to have read it but I probably wouldn't recommend it to anybody else. And one stars I save for the books that I should have DNF'd. Ideally I won't have very many one stars just because I should have DNF'd them so hopefully I did. My goal would be that I would have zero one stars because I would DNF any book that would come to that point. And then the last category is just that I forgot. Um, I was worried while I was uploading like some of these pictures that I literally wouldn't remember what these books were about and so I added uh, another category. I forgot or I'm just like not gonna rate it. I will say that I'll probably also be giving like point ratings to this even though there aren't any like here. So for example like a 4.5 to a book which is how it'll go into my story graph but for the purposes of this all of those numbers would be rounded down so a 4.5 would just be a 4 on this list but I will tell you out loud what the point would be added to that. Okay, let's get into it. Um, so The Silent Patient. I think that I actually did <laughs> rate this. There are a few books that I did rate right at the end of the year because I was doing uh, reading vlogs with them and I wanted to say what my rating would be at the end of it, but I don't actually remember any of those ratings. So if they're different here, my bad. Silent Patient, I think I'm going to give it like a 2.75 just because it, it was like a good mystery and I understand why maybe a lot of people really liked it, especially for when it came out. I think that maybe the, what it was doing has been done enough times since then and I've read enough books that are kind of similar since then that it didn't have as big of an impact on me because I like just read this and it's been popular for a long time. Also, these books are way out of order. And then we have One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This one, I think I'm going to say 3.75 4. I'm going to say 4. No, 3.75. I still think that I would mostly recommend it to to most people that I would talk to but I don't think that it like quite got into that like I enjoyed it on that level where it impacted me quite on the level to put it at four stars so I think I'm going to say 3.75 but just with the caveat that I would likely recommend it to most people to read. Malibu Rising, I feel like that is a solid three star book. I think that's as solid of a three star book as you can get. <laughs> It was good. I know people I would recommend it to. I liked the ending. I, I think that it had 
generally good pacing throughout but like I wasn't in love with it and I didn't hate it it's just like solidly in the middle had a good time hold out oh I kind of feel the same way about this one I think I, I'm gonna also put it in three but I'm gonna say like 3.25 maybe for that one because I did enjoy it a bit more and I feel like it just had like more going on that was interesting and actually now that I'm remembering it more I think it may be like a 3.5 if you're into books I have like a little bit of space but not too much space and also talk about like real world issues and climate change then I think that this book would be enjoyable for you. Record of a Space Born View. This is, I think, the third book? Way Wayfarer series? I can't even remember. And actually, this is the book that I saw when I thought that maybe I should make an I Forgot category because I don't really, I remember like the first and the fourth book really well and one of the plot lines of the second book, but the third book is just like a nothing to me. Like I don't remember it. I, I'm putting it in I Forgot. We'll be talking about the fourth book in the series too at, at some point. Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris. I loved this book. I think that I'd give it like a 4.5. It was getting close to like five star territory, just not quite there, but amazing book, great imagery. Also this ended up leading me to learn more about a historical event that I didn't know anything about to the point where I was actually doing research like outside of the book and I think that that's always a very cool thing. Time Shelter, I think that maybe like 4.25 for this one. This won the International Booker Prize. It was my favorite of the books that I read for that prize but it dealt with time and memory and how we perceive our histories and everything and it was doing so many really cool things but just touching on them lightly didn't feel like it was just trying to do a bunch of things it kind of felt like it was trying to be this big message by doing a little bit in a bunch of different places oof the westing game i think that i'm gonna put this in like one star i definitely should have dnf'd this one while i like mysteries that are also kind of in this game setting this one in particular i think there were just too many characters to keep track of it definitely feels like an older style mystery but not in a good way <laughs> for me personally. Caliban's War is the second book in the Expanse series, which was a reread for me this year. This one I had a lot of fun with. I think that I would put it maybe like just four stars, like a straight four stars. It introduced one of my favorite characters uh, in the series, I wanna say. I'm assuming that they're, they're gonna be like more in the series going forward, but I liked the directions and like the perspectives that we got in this one. I don't wanna say too much considering it's the second book of the series, but just the Expanse series in general, I have so much fun reading and I'm really excited to continue reading. It's a space opera. There's just so much to the world, to the universe that it creates and adds in and so much that super well thought out and I feel like at this point I really understand the setting and the atmosphere and the political environment. To get a reader, especially me, to understand those nuances I think is a huge win. Then we have A Spell of Good Things which I love. I love this book so much. I think that this would be at like a 4.75. I think it's just under a five star for me. Set in Nigeria. It's a dual perspective looking at a young boy and a young woman and while there were a lot of aspects to the young boy's story that I liked, I still think that the woman's perspective was so much greater to me in my mind and I remember it a lot more. Not to say that his story is not good because I do think that it has a lot to say about like how easily you can fall into certain crowds or certain choices in your life that would maybe not be the best but when you are not in a system that's set up to support you like how easy that can be. Then we have Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. This is a new favorite for me, one of my favorites of all time. It is a five star. It's a book about that teaches uh, about writing and also life. Then we have Zero Days by Ruth Ware. I would say a 3.5 for that one. It's a little bit more heisty feeling than her other books, but definitely an, an enjoyable, fun thriller. Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe. Uh, this one, oh, it's, it's a really good book. Uh, this is another one that got me to looking more into a historical event that I'd looked into a little bit. So this is about the troubles in Ireland. This one, I think that this would be like a solid 4.5. 4. The Secret History. Ooh, okay. Is this a five star? I kind of feel like it is. Is it? It's like a 4.75 or 5 star. Do I want to say it's a 5 star? I love the atmosphere of this book, which is something that's huge for me in general. Love atmosphere. I'll say it a million times over and you'll probably get sick of it. Yeah, I think it's a 5 star read. It's just like the characters are done so well and like you really feel like you know them by the end of it and you feel like you understand their life and even though you're not in like every tiny little aspect of it, I feel like I know what their day-to-day -day life is without needing to be told start to end of the day what they do. And that's something that I like really appreciate in a book. Plus there's like a little bit of not really a murder mystery because you know 
you know about it going in you just don't know like the details around it which is obviously something that i like considering i really like reading thrillers and things and mysteries so i feel like all together yeah that makes it a five star the fountainhead one star should have dnf'd <laughs> i didn't dnf it because it's for a uh, video it's for my ted lasso season two video but if it wasn't for that, I would have definitely DNF'd and I still almost DNF'd anyway. All the little bird hearts I think are is probably a three star, maybe 2.75. I think it's like just under the three star area. I think that there are a lot of like really good parts to the book, but there were also a lot of very slow parts, things that I think just detracted from it in general. I think it would have made an incredible short story. Like if, if I could just reduce it down to all the parts that I liked about it, I think it'd be like one of my favorite short stories of all time. But there's just so much else that I think just like knocked it down a peg for me. Maybe it is a three star though. I still think that there's enough in it to like yeah, actually, I'm changing my mind. I'm putting it in three stars. I think there's enough to put it there. Then we've got In Ascension, which was another book that had just incredible atmosphere. I think that this one, I'm going to say like a 4.5 maybe. Maybe a 4.25 actually. I really enjoyed it, but as I'm looking at like the other ones that are in the four star area, I do think it's kind of the bottom of those, which is weird to say considering it is one that made it onto my favorite books of the year list but i don't think that that list is always going to necessarily reflect like my highest rated books of the year like i think it'll be close but not quite just because i think sometimes these books like hit you at the right time you know and i feel like that book hit me at the right time but going forward like and, and how i would rate it is not like quite there hopefully that makes any sort of sense at all study for obedience is a five star <laughs> That one, I could see myself like rereading over and over. It's very weird. You don't know if you can trust the narrator, but it's in the best way. And I don't know how to explain that without ruining like what the experience of reading it is. Okay, Brett Easton Ellis's The Shards. This one's so hard because is it a great book? Yes. Was it one of the most difficult reading experiences of my life? Also, yes. <laughs> I, there are, there's not very many people I feel like I would recommend this to, but the people that I would recommend it to would like love it. I'm gonna say 3.25 because I think that my, how I felt during it maybe colored it too much. The Bee Sting by Paul Murray, very good book. I'm gonna say four stars for this one. It's really great and I feel like a lot of people would think that it's really great. Trespasses, this one, I, this is like a, a two star for me. It had some good parts. Um, th this is about the troubles or set during the troubles. I wouldn't even really say it's about the troubles. I feel like it could have been better. A lot of people love this book though. So, you know, don't take my word for it. Boulder, this might surprise people because this wasn't my least favorite books of the year list, but I think that I'm actually gonna put it in the two star area. I don't think that I should have DNF'd it. I'm glad, I'm glad that I didn't. I don't know how much more i could say besides that it's like the bare minimum to get it into it too i i don't wish that i had dnf'd it but yeah i just didn't really connect with the characters i didn't really connect with the setting i didn't really connect with the plot i didn't uh, nothing nothing felt like it connected for me black leopard red wolf so this is the first book in marlon james's trilogy it's going to be a trilogy i believe so i read the first and second book the only two that are out at this point and black leopard red wolf i didn't really enjoy all that much i would say that this would be like a 2.5 maybe 2.75 i'll say 2.75 because there were definitely like parts to it and i think more parts that i thought were good than that i d didn't enjoy or, or struggled with but then i'm gonna do moon witch spider king now i'm gonna skip when we were sisters for a second i think 3.5 i think that that one was like far better than his first book and i'm hoping that the third book is like even better than that i do think that these books are kind of difficult to follow they're a very like loose fantasy world a little bit mythological those style of books i typically really don't like if you are interested in those types of books i think you would really love probably the series in general but definitely the second book and you don't need to read the first one to read the second one and then when we were sisters this was a really good book this is the book that won the carol shields prize this year i really enjoyed it i think that it would be like a three point seven five for me i could definitely see this being some people's like absolute favorite book or at least like favorite book of the year speaking of very good books uh stories from the tenant downstairs i really liked this one i wish i could remember more of it though because i feel like right after i read this it probably would have been like a four four point two five but right now i have memories of the good 
feeling of being like, wow, this is so good, like while I was reading it. But it's kind of about how like a bunch of people in the same building, like they're different stories and it's it's split into different stories, but then they all interconnect, which that's my favorite type of short story collection. If it's like kind of separated, but also connected either through themes or through something like this, which is like actual physical space connected. I'm still gonna give it, I think a four four stars. Okay, and then Prince of Tides by Pat Conroy. I think that this is like a 2.5 maybe. This is another book I read for a video that hasn't come out yet, so I haven't really talked about it yet. So I probably wouldn't have picked it up on my own, but I do think that it is a good book. There are aspects to, to it that are really good, and then aspects that are just kind of okay. A Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, <laughs> see, part of me wants to put this <laughs> in like the one star category except that I wanted to continue reading the series. So I don't actually, like I'm glad that I read it because I wanted to continue the series and I knew that a lot of people said that the first book wasn't that great. So I'll, I'll put it in two star. There were a lot of things I didn't like about it. It would definitely be lower if it was like a standalone book. I think that even as the beginning of a series, I don't think it did a very good job of setting things up. It didn't feel like there was a lot of progression to it until maybe like halfway through and then it felt like there was a lot kind of crammed into a, a small amount of time. Overall, I, I think it could have been a lot better. We'll always have Summer by Jenny Han. So this was, this is the third book in a trilogy. And I remember being really annoyed at this one because I think that the first two were pretty cute and fun to read. They're YA, which is not something that I typically read. Um, I started on vacation. It was like the perfect series for when I was on vacation. And then it took me forever to read the third book just because I was no longer on vacation <laughs> and I wasn't like really feeling those vibes. But this did help me out of a reading slump and for that I thank it very much. I was still very disappointed by the ending. I felt like it was very anticlimactic. The the main character, uh, Belly or Isabel, it was kind of like, I feel like you learned a few, you learned these lessons already in the first two books and I wish you hadn't like gone backwards in my mind. So I'm gonna say two stars for this one as well. Okay, A Fine Balance by Rahinton Mystery, great book. I've never heard, a, I think, a single bad thing about it. Uh, it's incredibly sad, I did cry and I think it's a four star. I would recommend it to most people, especially if they're not scared of a sad book. A Court of Mist and Fury is the second book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Much better, much, much better than the first one. I would say maybe like a 3.25. I had a lot of fun reading it, but I just think that there was a lot of complaints I would still have like with, that I think I'll have with the series as a whole, but I'm liking like reading a popular fantasy series in general, just cause it's a lot of fun to consume all the content really to it. If I Survive You. Okay, so this was nominated for the Booker Prize. It's kind of like a collection of short stories as well and that are interconnected, which I do really like. There were aspects to it that I really, really liked. And then there were parts that I struggled through. I think maybe just a solid three. I think it's it just squeezes out of the two category because I think that the good parts like far outweigh the bad. Or not bad, but just not good. Okay, The Woman Inside, did not enjoy, not a good thriller, not a good mystery. I can't remember what genre it's supposed to be in, but it doesn't, it's not either. <laughs> One star should have DNF'd it. Then we have The Bandit Queens. I really loved The Bandit Queens. That one I kind of want to read again too. I think that this would be like a 4.5 for me. The the group of women that come out of that book and also like the lighthearted nature of it while being essentially about the idea of women maybe murdering their husbands. Like it's just so ridiculous to me, but it's, I think that's what makes this book very unique and what made me like it so much. And just the evolution of the main group of women. Bridget Jones's Diary, this was my first time. <laughs> this year was my first time reading this book. And then I watched the movie right afterwards. It was, it was pretty good. It was like fun. I would say like 2.25 stars. I had a fun time, but there was a lot of it that was very dated, which makes sense. It was like contemporary novel like set in the time that it was written. Cultish. So this is a nonfiction book about cults and also just like groups in general and how they can be a little bit cultish and maybe things to like look out for in those or just to be aware of, you know, some tactics that could maybe make you feel like you're a part of a group and promoting that feeling without maybe having earned it. I think that this is a solid three star. Western Lane, uh, this is a book that was nominated for the Booker Prize. Very short book. I think that it definitely should have have been longer. A good look at grief, but not great. I think uh, 2.75. The Beautiful and the Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So this is my first Fitzgerald. I'm hoping to read Gatsby this year. It's on my TBR spin stack. This one was such a good like character study, I guess. It did such a good job at 
showcasing the two characters that are at the forefront of this book. That being said, I think I'm gonna go 3.75. I don't think it's quite in the four stars for me. Then we have Brown Girls, which was another one from the Carol Shields Prize. It's not even really quite a story. Uh, it's just a lot of perspectives and like little glimpses at a bunch of different women that would be considered to be brown. So it encompasses a large group, but then what that is like, I think it's all set in New York, but it's, it's definitely set in the US. But I think that it could have been better if it was more story-esque, if there was more of a story to it. I feel like this is a really good use case actually for the two-star area. Since it's like such short snippets of a bunch of different areas, some of the snippets I thought were incredible, while other ones I thought were like not great. And so that's, I feel like that's a good use case for, for the two-star block. I will say, I think it's like a 2.75. I think it's like close to being three. The Dharma Bums. This book was kind of just all right for me. There were aspects of it that I really liked, short sections that I really thought like the quotes from it and the imagery behind it was really great. But for the most part, it kind of fell flat for me. So I think that this is going to be like a 2.5. Death Valley by Melissa Broder. Uh, I should have DNF'd. It was close to not feeling that way. So maybe 1.75. But yeah, there just wasn't enough there in this book for me. I just, I don't think that it was doing enough. Elsewhere by Alexis Shaitkin. If you haven't seen my favorites video, this is my favorite book of the year. It's very clearly a five star. All about, uh, womanhood, motherhood, looking for signs where there maybe aren't any and using those to like justify your decisions uh, or influence your decisions. And yeah, just incredible book. This Other Eden by Paul Harding. Um, this was the book that I thought was going to win uh, Booker actually. My gut was telling me that this other Eden would win um, and if you've been on my channel for a while then usually my gut about Booker is right. This is my first time being wrong about Booker or International Booker since Shuggy Bane so that was a little heartbreaking. I don't think I ever made a prediction about it but I'm confessing to you now that was my prediction up here and I was wrong. <laughs> I think that this is a good book. It's inspired by like actual events uh, that happened on this island, Monroe Island, I wanna say. I can't fully remember now. I remember looking into, cause I did not know about this. And so I remember looking into it a little bit after reading this book, but I think that I'm gonna, I think that this is a solid three actually. I do think that a lot of people would probably really love this book. Uh, but it just, it's got its specific audience. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. This one, I think that I would have DNF'd it if it wasn't for a video. So that's where I'm gonna put it. Um, and I'm gonna say that it's like a 1.5 for me. Just very, very repetitive. Maybe I would have liked it more if I had read it when I was younger or before I'd read a lot of books that are similar that likely were partially inspired by Ender's Game. Totally appreciate it for that. But for me, for this time in my life, didn't really hit well with me. Then we have Ducks and A Year at the Oil Sands. So this was a, a graphic novel that was really incredible. Is this a five star? I kind of feel like this is a five star, but I didn't include it in my favorites video. But now I kind of feel like I should have because now that I'm thinking about it more, it was just so good. I think maybe it's a 4.75. I don't think it's quite out of five star. This is, I think, part memoir, if I remember correctly. And I don't remember, is it Kate? Kate Beaton. She worked in the oil sands. This was her experience there. And, and a lot of the, a lot of it is really like heartbreaking stuff. But I, I also think that it says a lot about what it's like to be in a, a super isolated place and how that can really change people. Fire Rush. I don't remember a lot about this book, but what I do remember is the like club scenes and being in these spaces and it really feeling like you're there and and like you can barely hear like the person next to you but also you hear like little snippets for like other conversations and like just the absolute noise of being in a place like that it did really well but that's all i can remember of it and so i don't really want to like fully rate it so i think i'm gonna put it in i forgot which i feel bad about just because there's part of it that i do remember that i thought was really incredible okay the galaxy and the ground within this is the fourth book in the wayfarer series the last book and i know that i liked it more than the third book I didn't like it as much as the first book. The first book was definitely my favorite of the entire series. I think that this was maybe like a 2.5 for me. I do think, however, that this book does what the series does the best. So if you're into the series, I think you'll really like the last book of it. The Golden Spoon, uh, this is like a one, just a one star, a straight one star, maybe 1.25. I, I definitely should have DNF'd this book. <laughs> I did for a little bit and then I picked it back up but I finished it and that was a mistake. Final Girls by Riley Sager. I read that this year. Wow, why does that feel like last year? I was glad that I finally read this one because it's his first book under this pseudonym and I just kind of felt weird not 
having read it. That being said, I do think that it's probably his weakest book. No, actually that's a lie because the road trip one. <laughs> I really didn't like that one. So second weakest, I would say this is like a 2.75. It's close to being a three star. The greatest. So this is like a collection of stories that Matthew Sayed, Sayed, or a collection of articles that he had written and then he compiled them in this book. But I think because it's just a collection of different articles and things, like some of the articles are really strong, some of them not so much. Um, so I'm going to put this in like two stars and maybe give it like a 2.25. Fourth Wing, I had such a great time reading. So much fun. This got me back into reading fantasy. I totally understand that like some people that read a lot of fantasy are not like a huge fan of this book. I've seen a lot of videos of people like tearing this book apart. Well, I actually haven't watched the videos, but I've seen a lot of thumbnails indicating that that's what would happen in the video if I were to watch it. But I just don't want to. I, because I enjoyed it. I had fun. This is a four star for me. Then we've got Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I feel like if this wasn't for a video, I would have DNF'd it because it's just not for me. We'll give it a 1.75. Atmosphere is pretty good. Characters are all right, but it just, it just wasn't for me. The Friend by Sigrid Nunez. I think that this is a pretty solid, like three star middle of the road book. I definitely have some people that I would recommend this to. Uh, it's a good look at, it's a good short look at grief, you know, kind of like Western Lane, but also there is a big dog in it. And I liked that. <laughs> Horse by Geraldine Brooks. Uh, I forgot. I have nothing else to say. I just forgot. I, I have vague memories of decently liking it. The other half by Charlotte Vassell. That's how her last name's pronounced. I'm so sorry for all of the times that I said vassal, but I finally looked it up as I was editing the last video that I, where I talked about her and I was like, Ugh, I've been wrong so many times talking about her. I loved this book. It's five stars for me. It's like a mystery book where this woman that's like a part of this like high society is found dead in a park. And then there's a detective that's like looking into it and having a hard time talking to the people that are involved with her or like knew her in her life just because of how well off they are and how many connections that they have. And it's just such a good like case study or look at this like different class structure. It was great, especially for being a mystery. And like the mystery itself is also very fun. Oh, so good. Um, Homesick by Jennifer Croft. Oh, this one I think is also in, I forgot. I'm so sorry. Cause this is, I feel bad about that because this is a memoir and I feel like I shouldn't forget memoirs. I don't know why, <laughs> but I, I don't remember a lot of it. I remember it having like pictures in it and I thought that that was cool. <laughs> That's all I got. Um, the Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. This one I haven't really talked about because it was the last book that I read this year. Oh, where would I put this? This one's a very like nice, slow paced. I think I kept saying that I thought it would be like Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. And I agree with that statement that I made. I didn't love it as much as I loved Remains of the Day, but I still really liked it. I think that I would put it at a four stars. In my dreams, I hold a knife. I think this is a five star thriller for me. I had so much fun reading this book. I've talked about it a million times at this point. It's set at a Northeastern college at a reunion. You're getting a perspective of the reunion as well as the students and like the group that's involved in college, there was a murder while they were in college. And so at, at the reunion, you're finding out what actually happened then. And so are they, and it's great. And then another five-star thriller for me is The Last Housewife, also by Ashley Winstead. I thought that this was great. It did a really good job of like showing this cult that's a part of it, but also like how you get sucked into it and also the um, blaming that you do having been in it and then leaving it and how hard it is to come to terms with it not being a good thing to begin with. I think it does a good job of doing that, but also being like a novel. You know, it's it's hard to both be a page turner, but also like try to be sensitive to this topic. The Joy Luck Club. I'm torn between the three star area and the four star area. I think that this is a four star for me. So good. The family's in it. The the perspective, like getting the daughter's perspectives and then getting them their mother's perspective, their perceptions of each other, but then also how they talk to each other. And it does so well with the characters. So yeah, I think that that's a four star. Uh, the Last Ranger by Peter Heller. I don't think that this one's quite at, I should have DNF'd, but I didn't like it nearly as much as other Peter Heller books, but there were definitely parts of it that I liked. So I think that this would be a two star, uh, 2.25, but very outdoorsy. If you like outdoorsy novels that 
border on almost feeling just like a little bit nonfiction, then Peter Heller is for you. Leviathan Wakes by J James S.A. Corey. So this is the first book in the Expanse series. This was my second time reading it and I really liked I love the starts of series, especially like adventure series when it like is setting up and like getting that start to the adventure. But where do I want to put it? I think that this is like a 4.5. I'm hoping that one of the books in the series gets a five star. In Real Life is a graphic novel that Cory Doctorow did. This one was kind of just all right. I think it was just for a younger audience. Uh, I think that I would recommend it to a lot of people that are younger. Um, I just don't know a lot of people that are younger. I think I'm gonna put it, uh, I think three star in general would, would probably be it. But for me personally, it was probably just like a, a 2.5. House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Uh, this one was a really good Riley Sager book. This was really showcasing what he does well. I think that this was probably like a 4.25 for me. I could see people that really like his books not liking this one as much just because it does do something a little bit different. But as far as like the general writing and everything goes, it does very much feel like him. Loathe to Love You. This was a collection of three romance novellas and I read it because I was hoping that it would make me want to read more romance. And I'm trying to figure out like what I like and I really enjoyed it. I would say this is like a 4.25 for me and I'm definitely going to be reading more from Allie Hazelwood. Malibu Rise, didn't I just, I did this one already. I accidentally put Malibu Rising in here twice. I'm just gonna put this at the end then. Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. Uh, this one was good. It's not, I didn't love it as much as her other thrillers, but I think that I would put this at like a 3.75. I did really like the ending. I won't say why, I can't say why, but the characters again are written really well. The atmosphere is great, which are the things that I look for in thrillers. Midnight's Children, what is there to say about Midnight's Children that has not been said? It's so good. I do believe that I cried during this one but it wasn't even really at like a particularly sad part I don't know if it was me that day or what but it was just like this overall sense of feeling the like setup of it is is done so beautifully so well and so much like it doesn't even really feel like it's happening until you just realize it's at a certain point that you fully like understand the the world that these people are in so yeah I think that I'm gonna put this at a four point five murder in the family i did not like this one i should have dnf'd it one star it was billed as being like a, a murder mystery that you could solve yourself i think that that is incorrect i mean i think you could technically but i don't think that they played fair <laughs> the only one left by riley sager this is again like riley sager doing what he does best for me i think that this is like 4.5 this i believe also helped me out of a slump like i think that i read will always have summer and i was like still not totally feeling like reading reading and then after the only one left i was like all right now now i can and the silent patient is on here again too okay i did a bad job <laughs> i think i thought some of them didn't load in and then i reloaded them in okay the plotters this one is pretty good. I think that it was only like a 2.75 for me though. Mm, no, a three. I think this was a solid three stars. Uh, there are definitely people that I think would really love this book. I like the premise of it a lot, uh, but I just think that the characters were just at arm's length the entire time and that that kind of bugged me a little bit, but definitely has like a lot of adventure and fun to it. Letters to a Young Poet. This one I also read for a video, but I was really glad that I did. It's super short, but there's, there's so much like, there's so many good nuggets in it. Uh, so I think that I'm gonna put this at like a 3.75. I think I would recommend it to a lot of people, um, especially people that are considering writing or, or just enjoy writing. Okay, I had to pause for a second, but I'm back and ready to do this like last line of books. This is taking way longer than I expected. I, I should have known. Okay, The Sleeping Car Porter. This one, I remember really liking the main character. Not, not necessarily liking him, but uh, liking the way that he was set up and how well I felt like I knew him. Uh, but then also just the the sleeping car itself having that as like a setting for most of the book was really cool I think that this one i'm gonna say is a three star. Okay, the marriage portrait by maggie o'farrell I really liked this one. This is my first maggie o'farrell I do want to read more by her it, She intimidates me just because i'm not big on historical fiction So I think what maggie o'farrell typically does is she takes like a real character from history uh, that is maybe not talked as much about and then like creates a narrative around them. And so this girl had a marriage portrait, but she was very young and was just basically forced to marry this guy that partially seems great and partially maybe not. I think that I'm gonna say like 3.75. Oof, profit song. Um, <laughs> I should have DNF'd. Oh, I, and uh, I'll give it a 1.5. Five. Pyre, oh, 
I think that this would be like a 2.25. This is from the International Booker. And I remember not really liking a lot of it, but the ending was like good. <laughs> and I do think that, that there were pockets here and there throughout the book that were good. I think that the ending was really... I, I don't want to talk about it too much because I, I think that that's the, its strongest part. So if you're going to read the book, I don't, I don't want to spoil that. Remarkably Bright Creatures. Oh, this one was really cute. It's about <laughs> an octopus in an aquarium and uh, this woman that is the cleaner of the aquarium. She takes a fall and then so she can't work for a while but like work is kind of most of her life but she does have this group of friends as well and I like the community that it sets up. I I wish that, that like locationally we got a better sense of where things were, which is totally like not necessary for a book like this. Like I think that that kind of a thing is very necessary for like thrillers and mysteries, but I do think that it would have helped provide even more of that sense of community if you felt more a part of it and less like you're looking at it or watching somebody else do it. Uh, I do think that this is a great book club book and I ended up having two discussions about it with different people and both discussions were amazing. I think that I'm gonna put this at like a 3.25. Rouge by Mona Awad. This one is tough because I feel like I went really back and forth with it as I was reading it. It definitely has some to say about like the makeup industry but also about motherhood or about a mother-daughter relationship and then also about uh, cults. But I don't think that it really nails any of the discussions maybe the motherhood one and the vibes are weird but i i kind of liked that i don't know I, I i went very back and forth throughout i think i'm gonna give it like a solid three what i talk about when i talk about running which is haruki murakami's memoir and you get to hear a bit about murakami as a writer his writing routine uh, through like when he's like really writing a book and he's basically just like writing and running like that's what he does and he runs a lot but yeah overall I kind of find it hard to rate this one actually I think maybe a 2.75 I don't think it's quite a three for me I'm glad that I read it definitely pod I don't want to talk about this again this is my least favorite book of the year if you want to hear more about it you can watch that uh, because actually at the end of that I was like I'm so glad I don't have to talk about this anymore forgetting that I was going to do this video yeah one star point point five stars <laughs> I should have DNF'd it. And I did, and then I picked it back up. I should, I don't know why I ever do that. Okay, Johnny Tremaine, this book I read for a video uh, that has not come out yet. I think I actually did talk about it a little bit though because it was a TBR spin book. But this is about Johnny Tremaine who is like a young boy in Boston. The Boston Tea Party was happening and there are like actual historical figures that are like in this novel. He's a silversmith, I think. It kind of feels like a story that was purely written for teachers to assign their kids to read in a history class to be like this is what it could have been like for you to be a kid during this time and that that's about the best I could say about it. I would say like two stars. Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Fantastic book. Totally makes sense why it won the awards that it did. Just you know so much about the character and about everything that they've been through. Demon throughout the story, his evolution, uh, his reaction to the things going on around him and his location. It's just, it's all done really, really well. This one, I'm gonna say 4.5. Okay, and then my last book is The Da Vinci Code. I know I have two other books on there, but it's just because I accidentally doubled them up. So The Da Vinci Code, uh, I had never read this. I still haven't seen the movie. I, I am planning on watching the movie, but this was kind of a disappointment for me just because I expected to like have more fun with it. I expected to be like a super page turner, but I didn't really feel like that. It felt a little bit disjointed. So I think I'm gonna go with like a 2.25. Like it was still an enjoyable read for sure, but overall it was, it was kind of just okay. Okay, so this is my ratings. I feel like this makes sense. I only forgot four books. I've got 10 in my one star, should have DNF'd. So ideally next year I'll have less than 10 in my one star because I will have actually DNF'd more of them. I think I DNF'd four books total this year, maybe five. And then we've got a pretty even split between two, three, and four. That's crazy. But I feel like that makes a lot of sense. I think most books like fall into that category and then we've got one two three four five six seven five star books yeah that feels right this feels right to me i'm very i'm very happy actually like looking at this this it does something to me this is very satisfying seeing all my books laid out this way okay i need to read books more often because i don't even know how to explain this sounds so silly but i i really like this i want to like hang this on my wall anyways so here's to 2024 
and actually rating my books as I go, <laughs> giving them star ratings. I'm also hoping to like actually post them on my Instagram, at least on my Instagram story, including uh, my star rating. Ideally, like uh, as an actual Instagram post, but no promises there. Kind of just trying to work my way into using Instagram more as a way to review books because I feel like there are so many books that I don't talk about or don't end up talking about as a part of a video and then I just never talk about them and I, I don't want to do that. So follow me there if you're not already. I'll have a pinned like story, saved story that will be for all year that'll go through uh, the books that I've read. I am excited for this new chapter and I'm excited for the books that I'm going to read in 2024. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do consider subscribing if you did and I will see you in the next one. Bye!